Deck had an incredible regular season. Probably going to finish second or third in the MVP. But did Sunday show you it's time to let that contract expire in 2024? I don't think it was going to take Sunday for me, Kevin. I've, oh, I've been there for a while. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and so, and I don't have, I don't have a, a, a bone to pick with Dak other than be better. Um, and he even said that he needed to be better. So, like, I, I'm not saying anything unfair to him here. Uh, I don't have, I don't hate him. I love the the person, the leader, the guy that he is. There's nothing other than I think that there are things missing uh, from his ability to be one of the best players at his position at such an important position. There are things missing, things that he can't he can't do. Uh, and so I Sunday was another kind of like, huh, that wasn't the nail in the coffin probably for Jerry Jones, though. Financially, it means it, it's, it's too smart of a decision to just continue on with this and be kind of in this area, be in this place and be hopeful that, uh, that they can move on. But yeah, Kevin, there are, there are things that I watch in his game that I'm like, man, how can you be so great in some areas and so bad in other areas of this? And he said that there was a lot of disguising in his way yeah. and that there are things that he just didn't expect. And I get that. But man, to let it slip away that fast and not be able to, to, to ad adapt to any of it until it's too late and gone, uh, that's something I can't get. I can't accept when you're being paid that much of a portion of your franchise's money. NFL teams don't move away from Kirk Cousins and Andy Dalton's and Dak Prescott's and players like this. They make the playoffs for the most part. Yeah. And so teams just say it's good enough. And I think the Cowboys are smart enough. Maybe they're not, but I do think they're smart enough to know he's not a great quarterback. He's not a bad quarterback. He's better than average. He's a, at times he's great in the most, Hey, I've never seen a player in my life and congratulations to Dak. I've never seen a player in my life rack up more stats in blowouts than he does. Whether they're losing by 25 or up by 20, I mean, Dak can pile it on or rack it up more than I've ever seen a human in my life play that position. Because sometimes, the other day, in games like that, it's over. And actually, in a weird way, as much as we're talking about them laying down, man, he didn't quit when it was completely over. When it was 100% over, he's like, where's my 200 yards and two more touchdowns? And he got it. He got to 400 yards and three touchdowns. So in the history of the NFL, that's going to look like a pretty good game in the history. Yes, books. it will. And when they're up 20 to zero at halftime, hey, let's make this sucker 48 to zero and I'm going to rack it up. So, I mean, he is a great stat hunter late in games when it's meaningless and he wins games. He, he wins games where he has a good overall record. He's a good quarterback for this era, but you know, Teams just don't move on from these guys. They're okay. The Cowboys are – every day that they have Dak Prescott as their starting quarterback, they're okay with yeah. losing in the playoffs. Yeah, that's that's what it feels like. And somebody texted this in, and this is going to be the most logical argument against it from the 214. This cap hit is too great. I don't see how you can afford for someone else to be the QB number one. Now let's talk about that. The cap hit – for the upcoming season is $59.4 million. And if you just straight up cut him, your dead cap would be $61 million or almost $62 million. So a straight up cut of Dak Prescott doesn't make any sense because it would actually be cheaper to keep him on the roster than at least for this season than to just get rid of him. But if you can facilitate a trade you can lower that number. Now you will still take an enormous financial hit, but now you're talking maybe you can slice about half of that off. All right. And so the reason why I think that's worthwhile is because what's the other option? The other option is they've got 59 and that 0.4 million on the board. So what are the Cowboys going to do? They're going to give them an extension and that way you can flatten out the money and all of a sudden this cap hit for next season is going to be like $26 million. And then he's going to get a, you know, five year. I don't know what it's going to end up being. 270. Probably something like that. So $54 million a year. And people were angry before. So it's going to be something like that. 
But then you can flatten out the money because they'll put in the ghost years and everything like that. And that's what they did right now with this deal. Don't forget, after Dax contract runs out if you were to move on you'd still take a dead cap hit because of the dead year the ghost years that like ghost there. runners whenever you're playing like kickball and kind stuff. of where he's like or he's, professional baseball and extra innings he's sort of under contract for the next two years and 25 and 26 but not really and so that's what they that's what they always do that's what they always do that's fine you're gonna have the same quarterback who is a good quarterback in the regular season sometimes an excellent quarterback in the regular season and then when you get to the playoffs, you know it's probably not going to work out. That is the perception that I now have after this latest defeat. Or I would suggest you take the hit now. Specifically, you try to see if you can maneuver a trade and know that I know Jerry doesn't have time for a bad time, but you know that it's going to be a struggle bus year. Probably more. And... I know I'm seeing this, Kevin, in the question. I mean, obviously, we wanted to to see something, but even if you went with Trey Lance, you still have to renegotiate a contract with him coming up, right? Uh, he is under contract for one more year. So if look, all right, let's just magically say you wanted Trey Lance to be. I, I mean, and I'm I'm not saying I'm not suggesting that I'm that this is the answer to anything. I'm just asking some questions to try and see what. See where the okay. terrain is here. But Trey Lance is your gap year, right? Like you, yes. you're going to backpack around the NFL with Trey Lance because his salary cap hit is $5 million. So let's say you were to trade Dak Prescott. You can drop the number down and you're still looking at, you're going to give about $40 million to your quarterback. Well, that's a lot better than it would have been otherwise. Of course, the argument then is Trey Lance has gotten so much better since he hasn't played. And then he's going to play again, and people might be like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's what probably happened. <laughs> I'm not arguing that this makes your team better now whatsoever. In fact, it absolutely makes your team worse. It makes your Cowboys team worse in 2024 and then maybe beyond and then maybe a lot more beyond that. The, the reason why I said it, and we were having this conversation with Mickey, and he was like, your team could get worse. Absolutely. But when he was going over the stats from the game, saying that Dak got sacked four times, nonsense. One of those sacks was when Dak held the ball for 6.5 seconds and didn't see Jake Ferguson wide open on the first down. They couldn't kick the field goal. Like, even if you didn't see Jake Ferguson, you got to know to throw that ball away. That that That's not an offensive line sack. If C.J. Stroud does that, I believe they play Saturday night. I understand. It's his first year yes. in the NFL. Dak... In his eighth year in the NFL, doesn't know you're in field goal range when the ball snapped. He obviously forgot. Yeah. I mean, after forgetting that Jake Ferguson was his second option, he, then he forgot you were in field goal range. Yeah. And, and, and that's so that is a concerning part for me. And that's why I'm willing to take the step back. And then I see other people saying he can stay here for next year, but then you just let the contract elapse. You can absolutely do that. You are not taking advantage of an asset that you have in terms of flipping it for something else he if has, that's the case. He has a full no trade clause. So you have to, if you were to trade him, he has to agree to the yep. place you're trading him to. So if you're trading him to, I have no clue where he doesn't want to go. But um, my whole thing, and I know this isn't going to work out, and Dak would have to say yes. That team would have to want to sign him to a, Five years, two hundred seventy million dollar contract, or he's correct. not getting traded there, and there's a lot that goes into this. And then, but I would do everything possible to try to eke out a first round pick from him, and I think you could. I do think there'd be a team. And I look at Atlanta, and I look at Las Vegas. That's the eighth pick and the thirteenth pick. If one of those teams would take him for that first round pick, I would do it. And then I would trade that pick. I would trade the 24th pick. I would trade my 2025 first round pick. And I would even trade my 2026 first round pick plus other picks later in the draft and see if that's enough for Chicago to give me the number one overall pick. And I have my scouts look at Caleb Williams. That's a lot of work. Look at Drake May. Look at Jaden Daniels and say, who's the best? Who is a person that can change a franchise the way CJ Stroud has, the way obviously Patrick Mahomes has? Can I get that guy? Because I, the thing is, is you could get worse. We also know you're not going to get any better. It's over. He ain't making you better. Andy Dalton 
could only take Cincinnati so far. And, and Kirk po- Cousins can only take Minnesota so far. And let's stop on that for just a second because the lo- logical argument is going to be Dak is going to finish second or third in MVP, but that feeds right into Mike's argument, right? Yes, he is. He had an incredible regular season. What happened? You got smoked in the playoffs mm-hmm. in the first round. And in the season, finish he was first. amazing. And we, and we all know this. No, second or third. P- pure, not luck. He had a great year, but... Let's face it. He's lucky that Patrick Mahomes has one NFL wide receiver on his team. You know, Joe Burrow got hurt. Josh Allen got off to a slow I get start. It. Right. I mean, it, obviously, he's not the second or third best quarterback in the NFL. If you started going to Kansas City, say, hey, you want to do a trade? They'd be like, no, we don't think he's a top five quarterback in the yes. NFL. And unfortunately, now we're not even sure if he's a top 10 quarterback anymore because of the trash that he threw out once again in a do or die game. So. It's really tough. I know the Cowboys are going to stick with them, and Cowboy fans are going to have to live with them for another five to eight years. But if you were a real organization that really cared about trying to win a championship, you would do your best to move on from this. Sean McVay moved on from Jared Goff. Alex Smith was moved on from Kansas City. The teams that think they're going for a championship are, are move on from Dak Prescott. And I... And- Somebody asked this. I don't know if this is the case. And I'm sorry, Corey. I need to crunch these numbers just a little bit more because when you get into the trade market with the ghost years and everything, it gets a little bit more complicated. But somebody asked, this has to be Dak's lowest trade value. I don't know if I think that is accurate for one reason. The Cowboys will have to eat a lot of this money. I believe you would get Dak Prescott. Now, I realize an extension would have to come along with this, but... For the upcoming year, I think whoever traded for him would get him in at a cap number of about $25 million, maybe $26 million. And if that's the case, then maybe you're looking at it being like, okay, well, that cap number will work just fine. What that trade value turns out to be then, I don't know, because Mike's right. It would have to come, you would assume, with an extension since he has no trade. The One of the factors in this is, Mike, I mean, you pointed out all the things that you would do and that sounds really fun yeah. that sounds like a fun off season right. dude it sounds like and a obviously blast. multiple teams have to agree to yes. all of these yeah. things which probably wouldn't happen that takes a lot of work and i don't i don't think that that kind of effort is going to be done by them and i also that's think- the bad that's the thing that jerry talks about it's a complete and total i don't mind saying this because this is harsh it's a complete lie that when we take his statement, I don't have time for a bad time. Cowboy fans, some of them think that's about winning and losing football games. That has nothing to do with winning and losing football games. It's what Corey's talking about. The uncomfortability of having to sacrifice and not even knowing if that sacrifice is going to pay off. I don't have time for a bad time is saying I don't have time to sacrifice all of these things in my life. The other the other thing not knowing what, how it's going to work out. I, st- I think Jerry's scared. And, um, and look, man, he can look at me and be like, look, I got billions of dollars. What am I scared of? Sure. I think he's scared of Dak Prescott going and doing it with somebody else. Winning with somebody else. Be like, we waited, we did, we invested all this time. They do have this mindset of we want to draft and watch these guys grow into something. It means more when you're drafted a cowboy and you win a cowboy. Like, I get that. And it does, and it should. It really should feel that way that our guy finally got it or our guy did it. We drafted him. That's our, that's the way we do it. But you got to know when to cut, say, you know what? We've identified the problem and move on. And I think Jerry's like, I don't want to do that because I don't want to get Randy Moss. I don't want, I don't want a guy to leave our organization and then go win and us be sitting here going, what did we not see? I agree. I think he's scared. No, I agree with what you're saying. The issue that I have then would be if you were close, I'd be like, I get it. Like, let's say you made it to the NFC Championship game and you lost to the 49ers 28 to 27 and they smoked whoever in the Super Bowl. I'd be like, I get it. How 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 do you look at that and not be like, we're right there? You have been to the divisional round once in the last three years, despite the fact that that no team with that many wins over a three-year span has never not made a championship game. Never. And yet, here the Cowboys are. And I, so I think that's my issue with that. I think you're right, though, Corey, about Jerry Jones' mindset. 
I would just be like, yeah, but it doesn't feel like you're that close in this moment. And I understand all the concerns that if you tear it down or you make that big move, that you might not recover from that in 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 a while. Yeah. I get it. I do. I do. But when Dak said, "This is the best season I've had," and it's because of Mike McCarthy, the team's had success because of him. Add me to that list if that's the case. With people asking, like, does Mike McCarthy have to go? And when I heard that, I immediately thought, "Agree." Yeah. No. Absolutely. Hey, look, man, you you deserve just as much blame. Now, are there other things to blame as well on For this game sure. specifically? Yeah, man, I could look at that defense and say, what Absolutely. were y'all even doing out Absolutely. there? What were y'all? That, that looked like that looked like I sent my kids out there to play football for the first time. They didn't have a clue where they were going yet. And there are questions about if you're supposedly one of the best players in the league. Not supposedly. You are. Where do you show up in big games on the defensive side? Mm -hmm. Like, those are questions that we started to have yesterday and we'll have going forward. But that's a, that's a third-year player in Micah versus Dak just wrapped up. Was this year eight, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that's the biggest difference.